you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me one quick favor, see that little black subscribe button on the bottom of your screen, go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button really does help this channel grow my audience grow. And I appreciate it more than, you know, also quick, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook of the Betfred Sportsbook app, bet $50 on any game. Get up to $1,111 in free bets, courtesy of the Betfred Sportsbook. Thank you again. Now, here's the video that you came here for. Switch gears, and I want to hit on just a little bit of an interesting topic that kind of popped up onto my feed here over the last couple days. Uh, And frankly, it involves probably the two biggest names in college football right now. Nick Saban, head coach Alabama, won about a million national championships, and a guy we like to call Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, the head coach of Colorado. And the conversation and the topic basically stems from uh, everything that happened on Saturday night in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And we all saw the game, but Alabama, as a home favorite, lost to Texas. Now, I think Texas is really good, and I'm not as down on Alabama as everybody else. They did have a lead in the fourth quarter. They could have won that game. They didn't credit to Texas. At the same time, though, I think Saturday night kind of reaffirmed a couple things. One, Alabama, at least right now, is not at the peak of their powers. Not to say that they can't get there by the end of the year, but this is obviously their first loss of the season this year, two losses in the regular season last year, and this is kind of a crazy stat. If Alabama does not win the national championship this year, and I don't think they're in anybody's like top five probably to win it right now, this would be the first time of the Nick Saban era that he went three straight years without winning a national championship. That sounds crazy, but it is true. So the program isn't quite where fans expected. And Nick Saban is about to be 72 years old. So I know he said this summer, I'll croak on the field. That was his quote, not mine. Um, But even at the same time, like he's not going to be around forever. We are in the twilight of the Saban era. And the conversation is starting to kind of come up of like, who could potentially one day replace him? So why do I bring it up? It was because on Sunday, I saw... An interesting quote from Paul Feinbaum. He was doing an interview with Matt Barry of ESPN. I, I don't know if it was on one of their shows or one of their podcasts or whatever. And Paul Feinbaum was asked about who could potentially one day replace Nick Saban. And here is what Paul Feinbaum from ESPN said. He said, I had a colleague ask me today, who do you think the top three candidates would be if quote unquote Nick Saban retired? And I don't know if Prime is on that list or not, but why not? He continued. And I'm not going to go deep in the weeds or we're not trying to think of all of the names right now i mean they're all just nice coaches but none of them have the star power i mean quite frankly nick saban doesn't have the star power that Deion sanders has right now and so paul feinbaum bringing an interesting conversation to the table which we will discuss right now and that is this could coach prime one day be the replacement for nick saban at alabama fascinating conversation let's dive in And let me start by saying this. I believe that there is a scenario. Let let me me backtrack. I think it makes sense on many levels. I also think it doesn't necessarily make sense on some. And I want to spend the next few minutes diving in on those. In terms of the why it makes sense level. Well, first off, it's exactly what Paul Feinbaum said. To replace Nick Saban, you can't just be some run-of-the-mill defensive coordinator or some, uh, you know, whatever, uh, an FCS head coach or a power or a group of five head coach. Alabama can't just go hire the coach at Troy. They can't just go hire the coach at Texas State. To replace Nick Saban, probably the greatest coach ever, you need a guy with star power, you need a guy with confidence, and you need a guy that is willing to accept the challenge of replacing the greatest to ever do it. That challenge, the expectation that you win every single game you, you play, And that you win a national championship every year. And I'll just be blunt. I don't think there are a lot of guys that are built for that pressure and for that conversation. We hear guys say all the time. But when push comes to shove, how many guys does does that pressure just melt? Now imagine trying to do it at the place where the greatest who ever did it did it. That, of course, is Nick Saban. That's going to be a lot of pressure. Well, if there's one guy that is built for that pressure, it is obviously Coach Prime. His whole career has been proving people wrong. His whole career has been taking things that seem impossible and making them possible. Playing in the highest level of Major League Baseball and the NFL at the same time. How about this? 
playing in an NFL game and a World Series game in the same day. That sounds pretty freaking impossible to me. Not because I'm not good enough, but even just the logistics don't make sense. Coach Prime literally did it 30-something years ago. I think 31 to be exact, but who's even counting? Uh, That seems impossible, right? How about the idea of just being a prominent former player that wants to coach? Starts at the high school level, then takes the Jackson State job. You know how many former prominent players think, oh, I'll just go coach college. I played in the NFL. I know everything there is to know. You know how many of them have crashed and burned? Respectfully, think about college sports the last couple of years, the number of guys that were prominent players that couldn't work as a head coach. Chris Mullen, St. John's, Patrick Ewing, uh, Georgetown. We'll see about Juwan Howard in the college level. Remember, Eddie George took an FCS uh, HBCU job. We'll see if he does what, uh, you you know, listen, the point I'm trying to make, respectful to Eddie George, respectful to Hugh Jackson, now the head coach uh, at Grambling State. It is not easy to do what Coach Prime has done. He is one of one. It is like saying, uh, you know, uh, we need to find a guy like Steph Curry uh, to play guard on our team. There is only one Steph Curry. There is no like, we're going to find a guy like him. There is nobody like him, and there is nobody like Coach Prime. And so I think he'd handle the pressure, but I, I know he would handle the pressure. But let me take it a step further, because bluntly, here's the truth. I think he would kill at an SEC school. And I want to give myself a little bit of credit on this because it was literally almost to the day a year ago that I believe I was the first person to really push hard for Coach Prime as an SEC head coach. Let me explain. It was week three of the 2022 college football season. So we're heading into week three of 2023. A year ago, this week, Auburn played Penn State at home. Auburn got destroyed And it was really the game that you kind of realize, like, Brian Harson's not going to make it at Auburn. He might not get fired today. He might not get fired tomorrow. He might not get fired till the end of the year. He didn't make it. I think he made it till November 1st. But he is not going to make it. And I said at the time, I said the guy that I would hire, I would go get Coach Prime at Jackson State. And the reasons were obvious. One, he was winning at an insane level. That's the most important part. Two, he was recruiting at an insane level. And he's proven he can pretty much recruit anyone. He got the number one player in America to go to Jackson State. He got a five-star Cormani McLean to go across country to play in Colorado, even though I don't think he had ever been there before he visited. The guy can recruit at an elite level. Now imagine him doing it at an SEC school with SEC facilities, all the money, everything you could possibly want. And oh, by the way, a much more friendly fan base. You don't got to tell mom and daddy that they got to get on a plane. They can drive. There's enough players around like a two-hour circular radius of Tuscaloosa to win a national championship every year. Coach Prime doesn't even have to get on a plane if he doesn't want to to recruit. And so I bring it up because imagine him at a big-time school like Alabama. And it doesn't have to be Alabama. It could be Florida State, his alma mater. I mean, I guess it could be like a Florida. By the way, if Florida ever gets rid of Billy Napier, I would assume Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, would be at the top of their list as well. Um but one of these big time schools that has everything you need to win. It's unbelievable to think about what coach prime could do at the same time. Let me ask you a simple question. What can't coach prime do at Colorado that he could at Alabama, LSU, Ohio state, Florida state, whatever. And the answer is increasingly there isn't a lot that he can't do, which is why I do think like the dumbest thing that I hear about coach prime. And I hear this quite often is, well, I mean, you know, he's not going to be a Colorado for very long. And it's like, yeah, I think if the perfect job opened up, if Florida State opened up, if maybe a handful of others opened up, he would probably consider leaving. But why would you leave Colorado, especially in the new era that we're heading into? Because a couple of things stand out. Keep in mind, one, Colorado's headed to the Big 12. They're headed for stable ground. They are headed for a place where money They'll be in the upper tier of money. They're not going to have Big Ten money. They're not going to have SEC money. But once Colorado gets settled in the Big 12, there isn't much that that the SEC and Big Ten are going to have that Colorado won't. They'll be in the third most stable conference in the league, third most money, and bluntly, any of the things that he needs at Alabama, he can probably get at Colorado. New facilities, better coaching staff, uh, you know, or excuse me, you know, taking care of your, 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 your payment of your coaching staff, um, facilities, resources, this, that 
pretty sure he's going to be able to get it at Colorado as they kind of move over to the Big 12. Two, and I think this is an important part. If this was the four-team playoff era, then yeah, I think Colorado is going to be a really tough place to compete at the highest level. But we're headed to a 12-team playoff era where as of right now, there are six and there will probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five automatic bids. And so as Colorado heads to the Big 12, why can't they compete at the highest level of the Big 12? And if you can compete at the highest level of the Big 12, you're making a 12-team college football playoff. And so look, even three, four years ago, this is why Lincoln Riley left Oklahoma for USC. He won't say it publicly, but he thought it was a 14 playoff. He said, Oklahoma's going to the SEC. It's going to be hard to get into that 14 playoff. Go to USC where things get tougher. Of course, ironically, USC leaves their own conference a year later. Does Lincoln Riley make that move if there's a 12-team playoff? Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But the bottom line is the 12-team playoff is going to give so many more teams access, and so you don't need to rush to the SEC or to the Big Ten or to wherever. You can stay where you are. You can build a good team. You can win your conference. And if you win your conference, you're going to make that 12-team playoff. And from there, you can continue to build and continue to build success. And I think that's exactly what Coach Prime is going to do at Colorado. Beyond that, while the recruiting certainly would be easier at Georgia or Alabama or Auburn or wherever, Florida, Florida State, Coach Prime has proven he can recruit anywhere. I just said it. He got the number one player in America to go to Jackson State. He's getting kids to come to Colorado from Florida and Georgia and the Southeast that would have never considered Colorado without him. And I think this is only going to continue as he has more success. We talked about it last week. Bryce Underwood, the number one high school football player in America or the number one quarterback in the class of 2025, just started his junior year. He plans on being in Boulder for a, a, a visit for the USC game at the end of this month. I think Coach Prime is going to kill in 2024 and certainly in 2025 when all these kids have a year of seeing what he's about at the Power 5 level. And so it's a fascinating conversation. I think Alabama, as well as pretty much anybody in college football, would be absurd not to call Coach Prime. I think he'd make a great candidate. I also think he's going to do great things at Colorado, and I think he's going to be there for a while.